So with 2019 coming to a close, I thought it would be a really cool idea to gather up some of the fragrances that I've worn the most over this past year. These are gonna be in no particular order. I just wanted to do a quick highlight of some of the things I found myself wearing the most this calendar year of 2019 and talk a little bit about why I wore them so much and give you guys a little bit of uh, insight into my fragrance journey throughout the year. We've got eight different fragrances here. Like I said, no particular order. We're gonna go through them one by one and I'm gonna show you what my 2019 smelled like. So starting off at number one on the list, we're going to be talking about a fragrance that I love to wear for close encounters. This is a great fragrance that is going to be very mass appealing and it's going to get you a lot of compliments simply because it smells so nice and soapy. When I mention the soap fragrance, a lot of people are already going to know what I'm talking about. Today we are talking about Prada L'Homme. This is the original version. Um, I do also own the intense version. I personally prefer the original Prada L'Homme. I'm going to take the cap off here and do a couple of sprays for you guys because this is just absolutely fantastic and I can't get enough of smell on it. This is an uh, any kind of party, any kind of family gathering, any kind of formal uh, low stake situation that I didn't need to smell particularly sweet or sexy or anything like that. This is my favorite fragrance for anything of those situations. Uh, Prada Lome is uh, my first of my 2019 list. I found myself wearing this an absolute ton. It's got a lot of hype. I'm not going to talk a lot about it simply because this one's gotten so much coverage in the YouTube community as, as it is. Great soap fragrance. Great for when you're looking nice. Great for when you are looking sharp and you want to have a great close encounter. Soapy, fresh, super mass appealing, uh, super non-challenging. Great fragrance. I recommend Prada Lome. I wore this a bunch this year. Next up on the list is another fragrance that's very well known. Uh, it's not gonna come as a shock for anybody that this was my uh, one of my most popular of 2019, and I'm sure it was a lot of uh, yours as well. This is Yves Saint Laurent. Uh, this is La Nuit de L'Homme. The cap is just unbelievably fun to spin. And it's, it's, it's just an absolute winner, guys. I don't need to say a lot about this one either. Uh, La Nuit de L'Homme was my go-to date night fragrance. Uh, it is good for cold weather. I wore this one towards this time of year and more uh, towards the winter, uh, but it can be pulled off anytime. It's not so sweet and so seductive that it really can only be pulled off in nights in winter. You can rock this really anytime. It definitely has uh, its portion that it leans to uh, or it's, its time of year and time of day that it leans to and that is colder weather, that is night. In French, the name La Nuit de L'Homme uh, literally translates to night of the man. Uh, so of course that's, that's gonna lend itself well to that. Uh, but this is just great, guys. I wore this all the time this year. La Nuit de L'Homme is one of my favorites. It will always be one of my favorites. Uh, it's hard to top for me because it is a compliment magnet. And oftentimes when I wear something that gets a ton of compliments, it's not always my favorite. Um, there are times where you want to get noticed and you want to be that guy that smells wonderful, that smells strong, that smells confident. Sometimes you sacrifice with something you don't love so much, but you wear something that other people do. That's very mass appealing. This here, for me, checks both boxes. It gets me a lot of compliments. It gets me a lot of notice when I'm wearing it. And it's one that I love. The cardamom, the vanilla, this is just a sweet, wonderful fragrance. La Nuit de L'Homme takes the number two spot. We're gonna change gears for the number three spot. This was really the only gourmand type scent I found myself reaching for a lot this year. It's not typically my style to wear the very delicious food scented gourmands, but this one, holds a special place in my heart because I enjoy not only the creator, I enjoy the whole line. Uh, this guy here is Therimugular, it is Angel Men, and this is Crypto Mint specifically. This one gets a lot of talk in the fragrance community as a good fragrance, not an amazing fragrance. Not one of the Angel Men lines that gets the most talk. Pure Malt, um, the original Angel Men, Pure Tonka, Pure Havan. I think get a little bit more talk than this, but for me, if I want to smell unique, this is a great, great reach for a designer fragrance. Obviously, if you go for some of the more out there niche certain types of things, it's easier to smell unique. This is a great one that's easy to pick up, easy to find. It's a good price and it will make you smell unique. Not everybody out there is going to have that chocolatey mint smell that this gives off. 
but it holds on to the theramugular angel men DNA pretty well. I really like how it incorporates both. Before I owned this bottle, I knew a lot about it. I had never gotten my nose on it. I was very worried how they would incorporate this chocolatey, this mint, this gourmand, this Andes mint from people from the US is probably what this is gonna most closely resemble. I was worried how that would work with the Angel Men DNA because I've owned the original Angel Men for a long time. Uh, this does it really well. This is going to make the woman hungry. This is going to make you smell like a chocolate mint. Uh, and not a lot of people are gonna smell like this. La Nuit de Lome, Prada Lome, like we've just talked about, are, are well-known fragrances. And this one is well-known, but I have never been to a friend's house, been to a family member's house, and went to their cologne cabinet or saw on their dresser a bottle of Angel Men Crypto Mint. So this one is a great winner in the more unique category. So Angel Men Crypto Mint, I found myself reaching for a lot this year. This takes the number three spot, Angel Man Crypto Mint. Remember earlier in the list with La Nuit de Lome, how I talked about a fragrance that gets you a lot of compliments while you also enjoy it? Um, that might not go for everybody, but it did go for me. This is one that kind of pains me to put on this list because it's far from one of my favorites and it has a bit of a rough taste in the mouth whenever you talk about it and bring it up. This one, of course, is Versace Eros. Uh, this is also incredibly well known, guys. This is not something I gotta talk a lot about. This is my second bottle. Reason being is if you want to smell sexy, if you want to go out and know you're going to either receive a compliment or just even if you don't receive a, a verbal compliment, you wanna know you're smelling sexy right now and you are really appealing to the ladies, Versace Eros is a great way to do it. That fresh apple just bops you right in the face and it's it's unmistakable guys it's 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 well known it's loved and hated by the community um, i'm a 25 year old guy and i do find that i still pull this off okay a lot of people will call this a teenager fragrance a young college guy fragrance and i don't blame them um, at all really because it, it fits that mold well it's great for clubbing it's great for dates it's great for going out and getting noticed it, it is a warmer fragrance it lends itself better to cooler weather um, and that's why I wore it a lot this year, because again, there's there's a lot of scents out there to smell sexy in the winter, but there are very few that are known to be such winners. And Versace Eros needs no introduction. It needs nobody fighting in its corner. Uh, it is well known to get you the compliments, to get you smelling fantastic. And that's why I wore it a lot this year. Not really for myself, uh, but to know I smelled fantastic and to know the ladies enjoyed it as well. So this guy here is Versace Eros. The number five spot is being taken by none other than Paco Rabanne. This is Invictus Intense. I prefer this formulation of Invictus over any other. I've worn Invictus the original, I've worn Invictus Aqua, and there's certain things to be said about those. For me, if I'm grabbing a bottle of Invictus, it's always going to be Invictus Intense. I wore this one also a lot this year. Um, it, it, it really is one of my favorites, and there's a lot of good I can say about it. I'm trying to keep this video pretty moving along and, and, and not to be reviews of anything. Um, I found myself reaching for this one in the summer. I really enjoy wearing this one in warm weather. Not everyone's going to agree with that or really say that this is for that, but for Invictus Intense, I find that the heat and my sweat actually makes this one perform better. If I'm looking for a good performer, Invictus Intense does it really well. A lot of people will talk about prior formulations of certain types of Invictus and certain flankers from Invictus performing better than others. I find I get very good performance from Intense. It works very well with my body chemistry. This is also my second bottle of Invictus Intense and it's about half gone. I don't know how well you can see the juice level there, uh, but this was one I found myself reaching for a lot this year. Um, and I'll continue to reach for it because it is just one of my favorites. Invictus Intense takes the number six spot. Wrapping up here, we are at number seven. We are at the final two. Again, no particular order of this list. These aren't any better than any of the others. Just our last two on the list. Uh, number seven uh, is just an absolute classic. It is uh, something that needs zero introduction. And it's gonna be something that maybe will confuse some of you as to why I reach for it so much because it's so well known. This is Jean-Paul Gaultier Le Mans. Of course, of course, take a look at that bottle. Sean, what are you talking about? Why would you reach for this so much? Do you want to smell like every other guy on the planet? Do you want to smell like everybody's ex-boyfriend? Do you want to smell like everybody's father? Uh, yeah. Simply because the, it, the reason it's been worn by all those men is that it works so well. This is my most complimented fragrance of 2019. Um, I'm not afraid to say that, and I don't think it's going to come as a shock to anybody. Um, from the patented male body of the bottle look, you can flash this bottle at a lot of women, at a lot of men, and they're going to know exactly what this bottle is. 
uh, and know exactly what it smells like, and it's gonna bring back a lot of memories. Lamal is a bottle that I will always own. I'm not a huge fan of Ultra Male, uh, of Lamal Superman, of Lamal in the Navy. I'm not a huge fan of the flankers. I've owned them, I do own some of them, um, and I wear them on occasion, but I find myself reaching for Lamal more than any of them because sometimes you just want something that works. Um, I think you guys down in the comments can hopefully agree with me and understand why this is being so worn by me this year, and I will continue to wear it. If I want compliments, I want something that I know works. Am I gonna smell hyper original? No. Am I going to potentially smell like other men in some of these women's and people's lives? Yes. But if I want something that I know that works and something that I know is going to get me a compliment or at least uh, have the people around me enjoy my scent, I am reaching for Jean-Paul Gaultier, Le Mans. And last but certainly not least on this list, we are talking about an awesome cheapie. It's one that's on a lot of lists out there and is very well known as well. Uh, I have no problems including it because I absolutely love to wear this fragrance. We are talking about Halloween Man, and this guy is the original. Soon, 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 I will own Halloween Man X. For now, I have not quite jumped on the hype train yet. I'm going to wait until it's a little bit more readily available. Um, Halloween Man still remains one of my most worn. I also own Halloween Man Shot, but uh, for that purpose that Halloween Man Shot would usually fill, I find myself wearing La Nuit de Lome. It is often compared to La Nuit de Lome, um, it's not so much that's the reason I don't wear it, it's because I feel like the role that La Nuit de Lone fills, for me, does a little bit better than Halloween Man Shot, but Halloween Man Original is kind of a role all of its own. I, I agree with the loud vocal majority of that this does smell similar to Paco Rabanne's One Million, but I think it's a little bit more unique, and I find myself reaching for this more often than my bottle of One Million. One Million is something I haven't worn for a long time, because I'm typically wearing this. It's a little bit less sweet, it's a little bit less of that punch, that bubble gum in the face, this is a little more mild, but it's not short on compliments. This guy here is another compliment king. For those of you that wear Halloween Man, you know how well it pulls compliments. And for roughly $23 to $26 a bottle, you can spray this all day long and get all the compliments you want. It does project fine. Um, I think projection for me is good. Longevity is not so good. But I know that this one does perform okay. Um, it's Usually when I'm wearing this, I'm taking it with me and I will apply it again later in the day. But for the price point, I don't mind that, and I'm totally okay with it. Halloween Man is a great line that has a lot of awesome flankers, but what I found myself wearing most of 2019 was the original Halloween Man. I do think that will change in 2020. I'm very excited to get my nose on Halloween Man X, and I am going to attempt to get a bottle of that soon, do a review on it, wear it. And if the hype is real, I find myself potentially wearing that a lot, but Halloween Man is going to wrap up our 2019 list. I almost forgot about our eighth fragrance, guys. It's so small that I have over here that I almost missed it. I know I said Halloween Man was our last fragrance. Uh, I was actually mistaken. I have one here. This is a decant, so that's why it was so small and hard to see. Hopefully you can read on the text here. It might take a second to focus in. We have a small decant of something I wore a lot this year, and that is Reed Irish Tweed. Now, why do I have a decant, you ask? I have not yet pulled the trigger on this fragrance. Um, this is actually my third decant of Green Irish Tweed that I've owned throughout the year because I don't wear it a lot. This is a favorite of me to Christmas parties. This is a favorite of me to family events. This is when I'm wearing a nice outfit, a nice clean jacket, blazer, sweater, something that's very nice and clean. It is a great dumb reach for me. It's a great dumb reach for those times when I'm not 100% sure what to wear, but I know I want to smell really nice. Maybe I don't want to smell sexy. Maybe I don't want to smell seductive. I don't want to smell like a bar of soap, so I wouldn't reach for Prada Loam. I reach for Green Irish Tweed. Um, this is something that is very well known in the community. Again, I don't need to talk a lot about this. Um, it's one of my favorite creeds, and Green Irish Tweed is something I'll be pulling the trigger on for a full bottle soon. But it is the true uh, last spot on our list for what I wore the most in 2019. This is a five mil decant sent to me by a super nice gentleman named Javier. I won't say her last name, pal, uh, in some of the fragrance groups that I'm in. Uh, and I've been wearing the crap out of this since he sent it. And I'm sure I will continue to wear it uh, until 2019 is over and far past it. So I hope you guys enjoyed the list of what I was wearing the most this year of 2019 as far as fragrances go. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video, hanging out with me. Uh, what were your thoughts? I'd love to see what you guys thought of my list and I'd love to see what you guys were wearing most of 2019. Please drop those answers down in the comments below. Um, I hope we can maybe find some common ground and see if there was one scent that stuck out a lot this year, but I hope we also have a lot of variety and can see what people were rocking this year as far as their scents go. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to drop a like down below. Hit that subscribe button. It'll 
notify you whenever I have posted. Hit that bell icon and that'll make sure that that happens and follow along for the fun. We got lots more content coming up as we wrap up 2019 and into 2020 as well. My name is Sean with Sense by Sean and thanks for tuning in.